I rise today in strong support of the nomination of Judge Robert L. Wilkins to be a circuit judge for the United States Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia. I was pleased to introduce Judge Wilkins to the Judiciary Committee in September, and the committee favorably reported his nomination in October. Judge Wilkins currently serves as a federal district judge for the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia and was unanimously confirmed by the Senate for this position in 2010. I urge the Senate to invoke cloture to allow an up or down vote on this extremely qualified nominee. Judge Wilkins is a native of Muncie, Indiana. He obtained his BS cum laude in chemical engineering from Rose Holman Institute of Technology and his JD from Harvard Law School. Following graduation, Judge Wilkins clerked for the Honorable Earl B. Killiam of the U.S. District Court for the Southern Division, Southern District of California. He, he later served as a staff attorney and as head special litigation for the Public Defender Service for the District of Columbia. He then practiced as a partner with the venerable law firm specializing in white collar crime, intellectual property, and complex civil litigation before taking the bench as a judge. Besides Judge Wilkins' professional accomplishments as an attorney, he has played a leading role as a plaintiff in the landmark civil rights case in Maryland involving racial profiling. During his tenure with the Public Defender Service and in private practice, Judge Wilkins served as the lead plaintiff in Wilkins versus State of Maryland, a civil rights lawsuit against the Maryland State Police for a traffic stop they conducted on Judge Wilkins and his family. In 1992, Judge Wilkins attended his grandfather's funeral in Chicago and then began an all-night road trip home with three family members. Judge Wilkins was due back in Washington, D.C. that coming morning for a court appearance as a public defender. A Maryland State police, police trooper pulled him over. The police detained the family and deployed a drug-sniffing dog to check the car after Judge Wilkins declined to consent to a search of the car, stating there was no reasonable suspicion. The family stood in the rain during the search, which did not under, uh, uh, uncover any contraband. Judge Wilkins later said that, it's hard to describe the frustration and pain you feel when people pressure you to be guilty for no good reason, and you know that you are innocent. We fit the profile to a T. We were traveling on I-68 early in the morning in a Virginia rental car, and my cousin and I, the front seat passengers, were young black males. The only problem was that we were not dangerous, that they were not guilty of anything. It should not be suspicious to travel on a highway early in the morning in a Virginia rental car, and it should not be suspicious to be black. After the traffic stop, Judge Wilkins began reviewing the Maryland State Police data and noticed that while the majority of those drivers searched on I-95 were black, blacks made up only a small minority of the drivers traveling on the road. Judge Wilkins filed a civil rights lawsuit, which resulted in two landmark settlements that were first to require systematic co uh, of and publication by police agencies of data for all highway drug and weapon searches, including data regarding the race of the motorists involved, the justification for the search, and the outcome of the, of the search. The settlement also required the state police to hire an independent consultant, install video cameras in their vehicles, conduct internal investigation of all citizen complaints of racial profiling, and provide the Maryland NAACP with quarterly reports containing detailed information on the number, nature, location, and disposition of racial profiling complaints. These settlements inspired a June 1999 executive order by President Clinton, congressional hearings, and legislation that has been enacted in half of the 50 states. It was a landmark case. It pointed out the right way in which we should have oversight and the right way to end racial profiling. And, and Judge Wilkins took the leadership and did something that many of us, I think, would, would have had a hard time doing, putting himself forward in order to do what was right. As my colleagues know, I have introduced S-1038, the End Racial Profiling Act, which would codify many of the practices now used by the Maryland State Police to root out use of racial profiling by law enforcement. The Judiciary Committee held a hearing on ending the use of racial profiling last year, and I am hopeful 
that with broader discussions on racial profiling generated by the tragic death of Trayvon Martin, that we can come together and move forward on this legislation. Judge Wilkins played a key role in the passage of the federal statute establishing the National Museum of African American History and Culture Plan for Presidential Commission. And he served as the chairman and the site and building committee of that presidential commission. The work of the presidential commission led to the passage of public law number 108-184, which authorized the creation of the National Museum of African American History and Culture. This museum will be the newest addition to the Smithsonian and is scheduled to open in 2015 between the National Museum of American History and the Washington Monument on the National Mall. Judge Wilkins continues his pro bono work to this day. He has currently serves as the court liaison to the Standing Committee on Pro Bono Legal Services of the Judicial Conference of the DC Circuit. He is committed to public service. He is committed to equal justice under the law. As a U.S. District Judge for the District of Columbia since 2011, Judge Wilkins has presided over hundreds of civil and criminal cases, including both jury and bench trials. Judge Wilkins already sits on a federal bench which hears an unusual number of cases of national importance to the federal government, including complex election law, voting rights, environmental security, and administrative law cases. Indeed, Judge Wilkins has been nominated for the appellate court that would directly hear appeals from the court in which he currently sits. He understands the responsibilities of the court that he's been nominated to by President Obama. The American Bar Association gave Judge Wilkins a rating of unanimously well qualified to serve as a federal appellate judge, which is the highest possible rating uh, from the nonpartisan peer review. The U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit is also referred to as the nation's second highest court. The Supreme Court only accepts a handful of cases each year, so the D.C. Circuit often has the last word and proclaims the final law of the land in a range of critical areas of the law. Only eight of the 11 court seats authorized by the court are filled, resulting in a higher than 25% vacancy rate on this critical court. It is today with large vacancy numbers. The court handles an unusually complex cases in the area of administrative law, including reviewing decisions and rulemaking of many federal agencies and policy areas, such as environmental, labor, and financial regulations. Nationally, only about 15% of the appeals nationwide are administrative in nature. In the DC circuit, that figure is 43%. They have a much larger caseload of complex cases. The court also heals a variety of sensitive terrorism cases involving uh, complicated issues such as any combatants and detention policies. Let me just quote from uh, former Chief Judge Henry Edwards, who said, review of large multi-party difficult administrative appeals is, is the stable of the judicial work in the D.C. Circuit. This alone distinguishes the work of the D.C. Circuit from the work of other circuits. It also explains why it's impossible to compare the workload of the D.C. Circuit with other circuits by simply referring to raw data of case filings, end quote. And Chief Justice Roberts noted that about two-thirds of the cases before the D.C. Circuit involved the federal government in some civil capacity, while that figure is less than 25 percent nationwide. He also described the D.C. Circuit's unique character as the court with special responsibility to review legal challenges to conduct the national government. So, Mr. President, we have a person who is eminently qualified for this position in Judge Wilkins. We have a, a need to fill these vacancies. The Senate should carry out its responsibility and conduct an up or down vote on Judge Wilkins' nomination. We're going to have a chance to do that in a few moments. And let me remind my colleagues that the Senate unanimously confirmed Judge Wilkins in 2010 for his current position, and he has a distinguished lifelong record of public service. I ask the Senate, my colleagues, to vote so that we can move forward and get an up or down vote on this eminently qualified judge, and I hope my colleagues will support his confirmation.